Well, this paper comes amid the U.S.-China trade war and the military confrontations between the two sides. What would you think would be the message that the paper intends to send to the other side? Trade war is uh, one thing, uh, but uh, military relationship during the trade war probably is becoming more important. Therefore, a sound and stable and a manageable inter-military relationship between China and the U.S. would be more important. Neither China nor the United States wish to have a conflict. The only question is, how can we work together to make our relationship manageable? Uh, for example, the United States has uh, conducted so many follow-up operations in the waters of China's uh, islands and rocks. So they believe this is kind of a uh, right uh, authorized by UN Convention of Law of the Sea. So what about the PA Navy? When the PA Navy becomes stronger, will it behave like a US Navy? I don't think so. The paper is much more like a statement of strategy rather than tactics. And when it comes to the real conflict, how would you think that the two sides can avoid a confrontation like what you just mentioned about the US freedom of navigation operations? We have a consensus. Uh, not to have a conflict, but we should really make some con concrete efforts. The U.S. Uh, would just uh, keep on uh, sending ships for this fun of operation. In fact, they have increased the fun of operation. But while they are doing all this, they believe it's a kind of a right enshrined in uh, international law. But uh, we would look at this issue from another point of view. That is, uh, even in terms of international law, you have to show, quote, due regard to the rights and interests of littoral states. If you keep on sending ships, plus all these re, uh, closing reconnaissance by drones, uh, by aircraft, by satellite, is this kind of a due regard? If we uh, in China do the same thing to continental USA, what would you think? To avoid conflict, the best way is, is to refrain from such kind of a uh, behaviors. China and the U.S. should cooperate rather than contradicting each other on freedom of navigation. Why can't China and the U.S., the two largest economy, change the mentality and come into cooperation? This is the third edition of the White Paper since Xi Jinping took office and began restructuring. What is the biggest changing role of the PLA after years of reform to make it combat ready? The role of all the militaries in the world is more or less the same, that is the territorial defense. But what makes PLA different is that it is now has uh, two more new roles, that is to protecting China's overseas interest and to safeguard international peace. Now China is a global China, and we even have uh, 140 million people going abroad every year. Plus, we have a huge investment overseas. PLA's motto is to serve the people. But in the 21st century, who is the people? It's not only Chinese people, but the people of the whole world. But there are some people showing their concerns about this expanding role from serving the country to serving the world, seeing it as a threat. But at the same time, the white paper says China will never seek dominance. How would you see this seemingly contradiction? Well, that is interesting because um, uh, if a country becomes strong, people will become fearful of you. But if you look at the China's history, in the last 40 years, Chinese military definitely is becoming stronger. But the fact is, China hasn't used force against anybody. Nobody would ever deny that China's rise is peaceful. So China's role in the world currently is helping the world to become more stabilized, to become more peaceful. And nobody has ever disagreed about uh, these PLS role overseas. Well, there are also criticisms about the fast development of the shipbuilding of the PLA Navy, that it produces more warships than it actually needs. So how would you explain this fast developing capacity and at the same time saying it is not pursuit of the dominance? Well, it's, uh, it's true that the uh, PLA Navy is developing very fast, uh, but the point is, uh, as to how many ships you need depends on how you are going to use them. But currently, China's uh, interests are global, as I mentioned before, and because there are threats to such interest, and because we have to make sure about the international sea lanes are safe, so that is why we got to build a much stronger and a much larger navy. Take the escort mission, for example. How can you explain 
that China needs to send some of its most advanced destroyers and frigates into the far sea operations. Right now, the role has somewhat changed in that whenever all these ships finish the mission in the Gulf of Aden, they would sail around the world in the uncharted water to familiarize themselves with this uh, uncharted water. Counterparacy itself is part of the mission, but Navy's role goes much beyond this. And when your capabilities grow, people's expectations for your responsibilities is also growing. So what is the plan for the PLA's international role? It's a role of being helpful, rather than policing anything. So we do not send uh, troops to fight against anybody until now. So uh, that is fundamentally different from some of the roles of the West. Even those people who have some uh, uh, criticisms of the PLA uh, about its territorial disputes uh, with its neighboring countries would never criticize PLA's role overseas. And how will the PLA keep the country's principle of non-interference with this growing involvement of the overseas operations? How do you differentiate uh, your involvement from interference. Uh, that is a big challenge for us. But I think whatever uh, China uh, will do in the future will be in line with its uh, foreign policy. Because China has a, uh, a lot of uh, attention to its own sovereignty, therefore I'm sure a stronger PLA will equally pay a lot of attention to the sovereignty and rights of other countries.